Hey everybody, welcome to the patron exclusive Hawkeye Avengers and Strategies class. Um, this is the first of a, what I hope to be a continuing series on um, different strategies and uh, tactics against certain competitive teams um, in the whatever current relevant meta we have. Um, so uh, Lane and I are on here. Alex is joining us soon. We've got uh, Joe, Kurt, and Tony, uh, three of our patrons, joining us today uh, to go through the class. Um, so thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, there'll be kind of a, a couple of different sections of the class we want to go through and um, some things like that. Um, so we'll, first, we want to talk about how the Hawkeye team works. So I think in, in, in anything to talk about how a team is, you can beat a team, you got to understand how the team works. Um, so uh, Lane and I are going to talk first about how the Hawkeye team works. Um, th this should be pretty straightforward, but we want to be in detail here um, as possible. Uh, so let's talk about what the team is and kind of some of the differences. Uh, Lane and I, Lane won a regional with this Hawkeye team. It's won a, um, what, it's won a qualifier and another qualifier, Lane? Uh, two qualifiers, a WKO. Well, it won, it won a Jeff WKO won. yesterday. Yeah, Jeff won with it last night. Yeah, and I got second with it at a WKO pretty handily. Uh, and then you want a regional with it. Correct. Yeah. So, and it's one of, I don't know, probably other stuff that we don't even know about off the top of our head. Um, so the basis of a team, it's 300 points on the nose. Um, you've got uh, the three main set giant girls, um, the two fast forces giant girls, uh, and it gets six IDs. Um Rusty, oh, I'm sorry, Chamber or Leech student ID, uh, Banshee faculty ID, Jean Grey uh, student ID, student Cyclops with the Chase or the Super Rare, uh, Rusty with what, the Uncommon and the Fast Forces lane? Correct. And then the uh, Chase Iceman. Um, also, there's a choice you can have the Fast Forces Jean Grey as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to just give you the normal TK. Yeah. That can be called out by Star Fox, depending, or uh, Old Man Cap, Old depending Man. on what you need. Yeah. So, you yes. Token up Star Fox. Yesterday, uh, so I played in WKO. Lane's played a version of this team. I played it with uh, Minus Rusty. I even, I just forgot to put my Chase Cyclops on there, Lane. So bad on me. Uh, and then I played it with Chamber. So that was the ID card setup I used yesterday. Uh, I only ever called out uh, Cyclops, Gene, and Leech. Um, so we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, Leech was there um, because I knew I was going to face the whales. Um, and uh, Chamber can be swapped out for Rusty... Um, or Leech can be swapped out for Rusty. It just depends. I know. think Rusty is more needed in most of these situations, especially in the mirror matchup, uh, than Chamber or Leech. Because uh, you're more likely to run into multiple Avengers teams than you are more likely to run into multiple Whale teams. So... Just keep that in mind. One of the uh, changes I would also probably make now since playing it is I would probably add in a third Fast Forces Giant Girl instead of a regular set. Yeah, fast yeah, absolutely. I would agree on the Fast Forces Giant Girl. So let's go ahead and change that for the team because I think that is a better play for us. Yeah. So, um, so I think the other thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, Lane and I stream games all the time or whatever. Um you know, I think today's class, we want to talk about the first few turns of strategy in each of these um, and kind of what is expected. Um, you know, we can't predict what every opponent's going to do. Nobody can do that. Um, but there is a lot of different uh, ways e any of these teams could be taken. 
um, or played. Uh, this is just kind of what we found to be successful both directions. Um, so let, let's start about let's talk about the first turn. Um, so that's it's pretty simple, right, Lane? You uh, uh, yeah. you, you move out with the giant girls. You move back with the giant girls. You pick up the objects. You sidestep them into and drop them into. Uh, Star Fox or Hawkeye and Star Fox is square and uh, they equip them the only thing different I would do in this matchup on this map is when I moved I would uh, carry out uh, old man cap to here so I can still get my leadership and yep. he has stealth so he's probably not going to get hit anyways right yeah um, he can't get hit by the uh Cyclopses. So that would probably be my first turn yeah. uh, move. But Dana has a different thing that he's going to be doing with this Blackbird team, so it's kind of not going to be... Well, let's talk about how it would work just as is, right? Yeah, so, so... I would probably move him out just to give him two more squares of mobility later mm -hmm. and keep him in stealth. Yeah, and I think what the, the main thing would be uh, and I learned this the hard way yesterday. Absolutely learned it the hard way. Uh, you got to maintain first turn immunity. Uh, the the of course I lost against Tyler and the whales in the last game because I lost map mainly. Uh, but I also broke first turn immunity against a Samcap team, and uh, it was my bad. I made a mistake. I got wrecked. Um, uh, so lesson learned. So I mean this is the hard part at this point, right? For uh, any team is. And especially this X Men team, well, it can't come over and Alpha Strike the Old Man Cap or the Fast Forces Giant Girl. So, what your opponent does turn uh, one, right? The second half of turn one is really important to what you do. Um, so, uh, you know, Lane, what what would you think? Of, you know, without without talking about the changes that we've made to the team, you know, a typical Blackbird team would um, pretty much just either run up and perplex up defense into the uh, boxing ring, right? Um, it depends. So what I would have done when I played the Blackbird team against an Avengers team, I would actually leave, uh, since I have two Cyclopses, I would just sidestep a Cyclops here mm -hmm. i would call out the rusty id i had and barrier uh with this moira i'd call out the rusty and then barrier because the fast forces rusty has barrier uh so i would give him barrier and then i would move um the blackbird up because that's going to get hit either way i'd move the thug up uh and this is after i put one of the cyclopses inside the jet um, and then I would hide a Wolverine, and this Moira would probably go with the Jet as well. Mm -hmm. So I would make it to where he had to split his team, and um, it would not be beneficial for him to come after most of my team. Yeah, um, and and I think the thing that I think here, Lane, is that with it with so with any so we go to turn two, right? Um, and I often like to assume worst cases. Um, in these situations, as in, um, you don't hit leaderships, right? So, right. Um, and you also kind of, and some of these things that we go through here, you have to assume that some of these roles are going to hit. Um, that that's always the big thing for me is uh, dice is a dice game, right? Um, but some of the stuff you can assume that um, it's going to hit or it's not going to hit. Um, and, you know, you've got five theme team probs on this team. Uh, and this turn two, you might need to use all three, all five theme team probs. Um, but in this case, um, this this team's pretty much going to die this turn. Would you tend to agree with that, Lane? Uh, in most cases, yes. So, um, so, let's talk about turn two here and how a Hawkeye team would work in this situation. Um, so let's just say we miss leadership, right? Um, yep. so, uh, fast force or main set giant girl carries up and you just, you, uh, you adjust the positioning. 
as needed. Um, carries up Masterson. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, to where at least um, Hawkeye is going to be for his first turn. Now, would you go ahead and uh, TK out Hawkeye with uh, Star Fox? No. My Colin would not be uh, Star Fox. Uh, you mean your you mean your um, you mean your uh, TK wouldn't be with Star Fox? Correct. All right. So talk through what you would do here. All right. So first thing I would do is I actually wouldn't move that just yet. Okay. Um, so I would. <laughs> I guess I'm off. Um, I would see if I could destroy this barrier. Is there a way that I can get a shot onto this Cyclops? How am I going to work my way down? Can I get a Cyclops to a... It would have to be up here. Yeah, it would have to could. be up there. So eight squares. Can I get a Cyclops to that square? Which the answer is probably yes. Let's see. So I can choose... Hold on. I have to figure out what I'm doing. Choose sidestep, pull out. Hold on, I have to do this in a certain order. So I'd have to sidestep, call out, sidestep, carry. I might lose 13 points here doing this. Um, then call out the Cyclops. Then he's got a sidestep himself. Two. And then one, two, three, four, right? Does that get me there? I don't think it does. What? No. You'd have to use... Uh, yeah, you I would drop it. one perplex into it. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to use Old Man Cap's perplex onto his um, defense. Not defense. His uh, movement. But that's two, three actions. So I would do this here... Well, she already right. sidestepped. Yeah, uh, she would move. I'm sorry. So I would move her to one, two, three, four. I would move her to here, carrying to here. So that's one, two actions so far. So at some point in here, I would. Uh, so here's the real issue. Um, how do I get my double? For, I would do it like this. I would uh, well, leave Star Fox you. there. Yeah, I'd leave Star Fox there to get my double perplex onto Star Fox's attack. Yeah. Um, then I running shot to here, right? Hold on, step five. But nope. I go two oh, that's right. I can place him up here because she's gonna die after she carries. If she's dead. I can move that there to like go there with it. Yeah. And he's gonna shoot at Moira. I don't care if he hits or not. I just need this to be Well so that's gonna oh, be a, that's gonna be an eleven on a eighteen. So that's a that's a seven, that's average. Yeah, but I'm not gonna waste any uh perplexes or probs on it. Uh probs on it. I don't care if that hits if that hits or not. Yeah. Um that's one, two, three actions now. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. So, so um, when you carried Star Fox, um, did he then call in? I don't think you can call in after you get carried, right? Or am I wrong? He called in first. He sidestepped oh. up, called in here, then he was carried over to here. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's work through the turn again. Is what I what I would have done. So I would have chosen sidestep with exospecs, called out there. I would have. This is the other thing I was missing. I would have. Uh, when I sidestep to here to get next to him, I would have put Eric here. Um, okay. And then I carry, or then I sidestep Cyclops. Then I move her, killing her off. Perplex up Hawkeye's attack, perplex up his movement. He running shots one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, five? Five. 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 You did five. You one, did it two, right. Three. Okay, yeah. Five shoots Moira. Uh, hits or not doesn't matter to me. Um, then I sidestep this giant girl. 
placing him here. Uh, and then I running shot one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So, Lane, four. I think if I was to make a just a suggestion on that first turn before you start your salvo, mm -hmm. um, if there would be, if you could turn one, if you leave, if you switch the turn one to that giant girl, instead and drop old man there. Or even drop old man right there. You can then sidestep that one, dropping old man to there, and then do your other sidestep with the Masterson. So that way, you have even if you do it like that, something like that. Um, yeah, that works. Something like that. So you can still get the perplexes off, and then you still have you have an additional theme teams. Um, possibilities. Sorry, you move old man up. So then you so now you now you have an additional theme team. She's she's untokened is what I'm saying. This was the one that becomes untokened. Okay. Um that's fine. And so what I do from there is I running shot one, two, three, four. Uh, target the Moira first, because I don't have to be within six for her, even though I am within six of her, actually. So, um, no, now, does he have any perplexes on him, or...? Yes, he has the plus two to attack from Star Fox. Oh, Hawkeye does, right? Okay. Correct. So it's three damage with Proxima Spear for a 13 attack. Okay. So it would be a 13, okay. I'd be back to an 11 on a 17. Yeah. Um, so we'll go with the 17 it, let's just roll why not uh, bam hits she's dead so go ahead and pull her off yep she's dies so what's um, even when, so, when a when a Avengers hits these fast forces get to move two squares for free um so I'll move this one, carrying Eric again, going yep. to here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can actually running shot into the... Uh, well, now, so you can go ahead and do the other giant girl too, right? Yes, but she... So that's... She's not really going to help me other than just moving up Sam Cap... Or Cap for... Uh, well, theme prob. team probs, right? Because like we said, you yeah. might have to use all five of them in this situation. Right. But I'm only going to have four on it. One, two. Uh, yeah, I'm only going to have four on it. Yeah. So then I activate my next running shot. And I go to here. Uh, actually, I probably stay. No, I have to go up. Yeah, because you got to be able to spear the jet to one, kill two, it. Two, three, four, five. I'm not going to be able to kill it anyway. It takes six damage. Or wait, five damage? Yeah, you're at three and then the spear... Four. It would just be on this last click. Yeah. So you probably oh. just you probably shoot the thug from outside of the ring and then go in the ring to shoot the jet. No, I shoot both from outside, but I shoot the jet first. I still want to be on his last click. Okay. Because it loses so, all of its mobility and stuff at that point. Correct. So I hit and I hit with a crit, but we're not going to count the crit because this is practice. So yeah. it's on its last click. It's on click five. Mm -hmm. uh, then I take a shot at the jet. Even no. the thug. Then I take a shot at neither. One, two, four. I fucked this up. I didn't count this right. No, it's fine. You just no. You... I did. I just I just have to move. Uh, so I go one. Yeah, you you just got to get to two, three, four. I go there. Yeah. Uh, shoot the thug. Yeah, you did it right. This is where you get into Hawkeye. So at this point, Hawkeye has pretty much secured his point value. Yes. And at this point, so whatever I happens, happens. Kill the thug. Well, it's two damage and then a third. So he's still on his, no. la he's on his last no. click. Um. Yes, he's actually on his last click. You're right. Yeah. 
And I go one, two, three, four. Uh, shoot at Moira. Yeah. So now you're back up to a 13. Hits. Yeah. Oh, she lives. She's on her last click. No, she only takes three. Oh, you're doing two. That's right. Yeah, I'm not close enough. Yeah. Uh, then a running shot one, two, three, four. And you immobilize the Wolverine, right? No, I kill him. You're only doing two damage. Oh, you're right. I mobilize the Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. So if I'm doing that, one, two, three, four, I can do it from the bottom side. So let me go uh, one, two, three, four. Do I have line of fire from there? Two what? No, you're one off. No. Oh. That had to be there. Oh, I can go back one. Right? You have to be right there. You're one square short to be able to get him. You just have to go up top. Well, going up top, I can't get to him then. We well, have to go to where you shoot the Wolverine. Right. So shoot the Wolverine. And then. And I still can't get to him. Could you shoot at Cyclops first and then go after Wolverine? Or... No, because I don't have a line of fire to him. Yeah, that one's clipping. So I'd shoot the Wolverine probably, make him immobile, and probably just sit here, right yeah. there. But it's not going to help, like matter because he's going to call out two things to kill him, which is fine with me because he secured his points. Wolverine's on his last click. Moira's on her last click. Blackbird's Moira. on her last click. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing he has left is. Uh, so the way I position this blackbird isn't how most people are going to position this blackbird. Like I made it really difficult on ours. Yeah. So me. <laughs> so so I Lane just giving you a good example of it, but yeah. normally, as you can see. So Lane, can you would you hole. mind restart resetting the turn, and yeah. I'll show what I would do just as a counterpoint. Because what I learned yesterday after playing the team and, like, had never played it before um, was that, uh, one, it, the Hawkeye does need a little bit of practice. Um, but uh, there's certainly a lot of things I could have done better. You want to go ahead and reset that barrier, too? Yeah. So I, I would do the same thing turn one, right? So this one had carried the old man. And you know what? You can't carry that old man cap. We had that wrong. Okay. You can't pick up an object and have it carry a character. Oh, you're right. You can just sidestep with the one up top then. with. Yeah, so it, then it's the same thing. So this one up top sidesteps brings him up to um, brings him up to here. So same thing, turn one. Now go ahead and redo, go ahead and put the jet and stuff how you did it, right? We're assuming that you, you did the same thing with the jet. As okay. a as an experienced blackbird player, so we're going to assume the same thing, right? We don't hit leaderships, right? We don't, um, we don't hit leaderships, right? So it's a it's the worst case scenario. Um, so what I would do uh, in this situation, a little bit different than Lane, as a Hawkeye player, would go. Um, sidestep up the giant girls um, and then go ahead and move that giant girl carrying Masterson right so one two three four five six seven with just my first action um, and Masterson didn't have to be in the ring just as long as Masterson is here uh, where he's at is matters as long as he's alongside this first row in the boxing ring um, See, that's that's an issue with where you've placed the boxing ring too most people who are on the x-men team will know that they need to place that one more back so that it's his third shot that he doesn't get uh to um shoot in it so it would take no, him well, just that's fine so i can still move up to here no, I no that's fine, but you can't get Hawkeye in there on your second shot. You have to waste a third shot to do it. 
No, I mean one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. No, it's fine. I can running shot into the ring. Not on your second one is what I'm saying. No, just just follow me. I got you. Go ahead. Right, just follow me. All right. Double perplex up his attack. Um, perplex up his damage with uh, old man. Old man. All right. Star Fox is gonna TK. Um, and probably. I really don't like, probably have to do this to get the right lines of fire. Something like that. Um, this is one of those things where I don't like roll 20 um, in that uh, showing figures on a map is usually easier. Um, so whichever version of these giant girls gets you the line of fire out. So I would XL specs choose TK. Uh, TK out Hawkeye 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and with that sidestep, also bring up Old Man for the probs. So, yeah. So this first shot, he running shots, shoots Mora. 11 for whatever. Why wouldn't you just go in the ring? Because I can't. Well, I guess I could, right? Right, yeah, right there, the right, right there would be the square. Yeah. Yep. So even better. Um, so that's a thirteen on numbers, right? Um, in that case, Mora dies. Um, Thug dies. Yep. Uh, again, a, 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 after the after Mora hit, right? We still do the Avengers Infinity free moves. Right, we don't forget those. So we can keep our probs. Uh, and then you can adjust up one, two even, so that you get the two probs on the jet. Um, the jet dies. The Cyclops pops out, right? Um, now he can pop out outside of the ring or inside of the ring. It doesn't really it matter. It has to be inside. It has to be one of the squares it was in. Or is it adjacent? Well, either way, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Either way, he's going to be... You're going to be a 13 on a 20. Um, so, at this point, right, if, you, if you've if you hit these other attacks up front without prob or with a prob or two, then you can pour the probs into that Cyclops. Because um, then at that point, right, you've scored 60 points, 85 uh, another 50, so that's a, what, 135? I'm doing the math 145. right. 145. 145 points. Um, so at that point, Hawkeye can just do whatever. I mean. Uh, yeah, so if you kill that and you just running shot back, one, two, three, or well, he has to stop. Yeah, he has to stop. Um, I, actually, though, probably, and if it was me. I would probably just run him all the way forward. So that if they start shooting him over here, I mean, one, he's in the ring. He, you're using their ring against him. Um, and two, you're keeping this force over here away from your force over here. Uh, and what was that? That was two actions, Lane? Yep. One for the carry, three, and then one for the oh uh, for the TK for the TK, yeah. Um, now, I would say like don't screenshot this positioning, uh, and this is what we say is like practice makes a lot of perfect, and um, you know it, it runs through this sort of situation probably a dozen times or better, um, and then I'd say probably take the fourth action and. Um, move a giant girl up here just to keep it away from the tank. Um, so now they have free attacks on Hawkeye. Uh, they can throw a tank at your team. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things that they could do from here. Um, but, I mean, I would say that that's kind of the general turn one, turn two strategy of a... Um, of a Hawkeye team. And at this point, right, you're, this X-Men team is pretty much done. 
Um, it, you know, it can it has a fighting chance, but with a with a Star Fox, a full health Star Fox, uh, five giant girls, um, uh, Eric Masterson that's still at full. Uh, they have a big task ahead of them to wipe your whole team. No, they've lost, what, one, two, two perplexes. They've lost their resource dial. Um, and if Hawkeye lives this next turn, he can most likely live the next turn, in which case he just finishes off the team. Is that a fair point, Lane? Absolutely. So, that's <clears throat> a, a big if, but yes. I mean, it's a big if, right? The other option is if they take the Blackbird and just occupy the entire ring. Like, your first shot is into the ring, and then you can probably clean up a square here to be able to continue the salvo from there. Um, and you know, worst case, if they occupy the ring and have a ring positioning so well that you can only do it by getting around them like being able to running shot up to here and down to here um, then you can just always put all of your perplexes into uh, attack um, and just shoot into the ring against the soft figures because a Blackbird team still has, what, a Mora that's 25, two Mora's that's 25, that's 50, a Tank that's 8, um, and, uh, you know, a Wolverine or a Cyclops uh, that's 50. Um, and, you know, Haw Hawkeye has the Ignores characters, right? So if he's shooting into the ring, he just runs up to right there um, and just has all of the ring to use his Proxima Spear in. Because if he can't kill the whole team, he can... Neuter all of them. He can just make it all of them immobile so that only they only have the one call out to do something. Um, which is just insane. It's the, the Hawkeye with the spear. Um, I had this conversation with Sam on the way home yesterday and I was like, Hawkeye with the spear is just so it's so broken um she because she was like man i you know i just didn't have the same experience with hawkeye and the tank at rock cup yeah. and i'm like that's because the spear is pre is, is pre errata tank broken because um, you think about what the tank did right the tank you launched it you did all of your damage and then it dealt penetrating damage well what does the spear do or you could do it the other way around if you want Right. Well, I mean, the spear is pretty much the uh, worded the right way, um, the way the tank should have been worded originally. But it's the same thing. You deal all of your attack damage, whether it's pen, uh, precision strike, side blast, whatever, and then you deal a pin damage. Um, so, uh, I'll I'll just open it up for questions. Me and Lane have been kind of talking. You, do you guys have any questions so far on how the the team is run? A uh, Hawkeye team is ran? Well, um, so let's say Hawkeye, um, you know, he runs out to to here. He ends, ends his turn there. And let's say he gets killed. What happens next? Like, uh, like, because it looks like, um, you know, the X Men team still has a lot of weapons to kind of come back after mm -hmm. the Hawkeye after Hawkeye is done. Like, I know, I know you have Star Fox with the Exo specs, mm -hmm. but um, well, I guess you just you just um, go to your call-ins, right? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So the, the so the so yeah the Cyclops and the Wolverine or the Cy the Wolverine here. I mean, they've got multiples of themselves to call out, right? Um, so Cyclops has other Cyclopses to call in. Um, you know, the thing is, is that he's got to be able to get... So at this point, if we just left the positioning as is right now, um, potentially Star Fox could die this turn. Um, By uh, using the tank? or Yeah, so they could use a call-in Cyclops 
Right, do all the leaderships, right? So, Lane, do you want to take away Rusty and the barrier, please? Yeah. Um, so they can sidestep, um, uh, sidestep, um, Moira can sidestep and the tank would follow. Um, so he's got to be able to get to here with his eight range to throw the tank. Um, so, uh, can you give me a marker in that square lane, please? Which marker? Just, just any marker. Just something to mark that square. So, um, the thing is, is now the, now the odds are a little bit unfavorable, though. Uh, yeah, because Moira would perplex up Cyclops' movement, right? And then he would running shot? Yeah, so you'd have to perplex up the movement. Uh, and well, uh, he has eight. Well, why? Okay, oh, so yeah. hold on. Why do you not have a Cyclops on your sideline? No, he would. So you'd have to, and it's fine. So Wolverine would go uh, call in another Cyclops. I'm saying Lane to be able to uh, kill the Star Fox this turn. No, I, I know what you mean, but yeah. Oh yeah. The thing is, is that. Actually, two two perplexes would have to go into Cyclops' movement because he'd have to carry the tank. Um, oh, you have Moira move. Yeah, so Moira, well, that's one, two. Yeah, you got two actions in which to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you move Moira. Right, so you move Moira, the tank follows. One perplex into movement. Two uh, into attack. Yeah, from here and then here and here. Um,. And then this one perplexes this one's attack. Yeah, and then the, yeah, the other way. So he runs up to here where we have our marker. Um, and again, so we... You, go ahead. So you're just calling in that Cyclops for the perplex. Well, and, and I'll show so, you. Well, so okay. the, his, his main attack is to throw the tank. Okay. So you would throw the tank kill all these giant girls there by targeting that square there. Um, and then, so the giant girls die. Thank you, Lane. Uh, Star Fox has taken two. Um, now, you gotta remember that now at this point, uh, Cyclops can take a free shot at um, this guy. Okay. Yeah, Hawkeye. Uh, and this Cyclops can take a free shot at Hawkeye. Um, and again, in practice, we make the assumption that uh, he he died. Yeah. Um, so Hawkeye goes away with, with the free attacks. Um, now the tank, this tank goes away too. Um, so... We might have to perplex the movement on the other Cyclops lane instead of the attack. Yeah, because he's got to get to there. That would probably be a tough hit on Hawkeye, though, because he's got the ESD and the boxing ring. Right why did you... Him. So, my, my question is, why did you not shoot with the call in one first? I mean, you can. Well, that's the, that's the correct answer, right? You shoot with the yeah. call in one first on him. Yeah. And then you drop the tank to kill him. I don't know. Well, he was he, he, he was he was blocked by the giant girl, right? No, he wasn't. Well, you had to have one more square because he was here. That's. I mean, I I get that, but so you were sidestep to there, sidestep there. You have to perplex up, movement here, attack here. Well, he has to go down and around. He has to have six movement. One, well, can, two, three, four, five. And he can't yeah. get without outside of five. Yeah, he would disappear. Yeah. So he'd have to go to there, and and, and so I think we're, I think we're showing our point that it you can't really get to Hawkeye or Star Fox. You well, no, you them. you can. So you'd have to put. He would have to sidestep and running shot to there. Well, no, he can just running shot to there. One into attack. Uh, one into range. One into attack. One into damage. Yeah, because he's got to do four damage for him to stop. Yeah. And then assuming he, he misses his senses, 
Um, then you go ahead and drop the tank with this one, with the last perplex into movement. I was thinking, actually, I mean, as a separate point, um, maybe just taking this Wolverine and charging on Hawkeye and then using the free attack on Hawkeye? Or... So I, I agree with you. I think the play should have been more of... Uh, because you, you don't have to kill that Star Fox. He's double actioned right now, and he doesn't have a leader chip on. Yeah. So. Well, I'm thinking is if you can't do it this turn, I mean Hawkeye's double tokened as well. So if you if these X Men breathe though, here's and this is what I say: if the X Men breathe, they get five four retails on them. But so, I don't care about the retail on. Wolverine. But I mean, Wolverine. Four retails. The, the two giant girls can't retail together. No, that's what I'm saying. I said four. I meant to say four. Four retails. But I'm okay with that because then they're wasting that on a Wolverine. So right now, I would probably actually just call out a Wolverine. So I would sidestep up, call out the wanted Wolverine, and then just charge Flurry. Okay. Or well, yeah, just charge. It's I would put enough perplexes into him to kill him. Yeah, I mean, you would you would have to call it a flurry. It's the the regular attack and the uh, uh, then the free attack. Yeah, uh, that's what it is. I'm at, I knew I was two attacks. So, perplex up his thing three times, sidestep my stuff into position, um, and say go. <laughs> like I've only wasted one action. Your Hawkeye's down, and now you have to do things with the other stuff. Right, so and I can sidestep this guy off the board. Yeah, or you can just leave him there because he's the wanted one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Now they just get to reposition if they do that. Right, so I think the the other so then what does Avengers do? I mean, Avengers has a Cyclops to call out. They yeah. they, okay. they they call out the Cyclops with this guy, um, old man. Uh, triple perplexes attack. Uh, smoke your Hawkeye, or Cyclops. smoke your smoke your Cyclops. Thirteen on a nineteen, no fourteen on a nineteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can go down or he can go up. Mm-hmm. Um, because old man's yeah. Because either no matter which way you. Yeah, you can't really body block, um, Cyclops like, that well, because yeah. the tank's tiny. Um, and then what? What? What I love. You have to move him up so that you can try to drop the tank next turn. Yeah, because if you don't, you're wasting the movements on the perple- on that. So. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and one thing I love about the the, the team is like, your one. You, if you saved one of your perplex, if you saved the perplex from old man, uh, this giant girl can go charge for six. And go to there and smoke the Mora. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty so either, much it's pretty much over with at that point. They have a tank and a Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> so. <coughs> and it it gets even easier against other teams sometimes. Like you have to think, people who are just going to be running, uh, Lila Cheney. Two Wolverines or four Wolverines and two Lilas, and like if they move up at all, they're dead. Like there's not much they can do. Like you're just gonna shoot and shoot and then shoot some more. And then I mean, the only thing more. they can do, Lane, is just have theme team probs and a, a lot of perplex. Let me let me ask you a question though. What's up? Go ahead. So, um, I mean, obviously it's not set up for this, but I, I'm, I was thinking, like, what does Avengers do against, like, teams that are... Because I never know how to deal with teams that are, like, uh, hard-to-kill teams, like with uh, Lockjaw and Daredevil and stuff like that. Like, how does it, Avengers deal with that kind of a team? So, with the spear is what sets it apart. So, say you have a Hawkeye, uh, and say you're playing against a don't-die team. So, the most popular one right now, let's say, is Haha Joker, Lockjaw, Daredevil... And um, uh, what's his name? Haha, Joker, Daredevil, Hawkeye, or 
do lockjaw lockjaw and then it's whatever oh there. iron heart I- iron, iron heart, heart or, or skull or daredevil so shifting focus deadpool that sort of thing. yeah so the the thing you have is your biggest asset is this this guy so protect him in those matchups um it you can attack the daredevil and get an attack on him every turn or two turns every what you get what i'm saying but like you have a chance to do it and he's never going to be on his top click so if the proxima spear you just make him immobile or you put him on his second click because he's going to die and he comes back and you can do the penetrating damage to put him on a second click or you can make him immobile and he can't move yeah and then the same thing unless lockjaw picks invincible you're, yeah, taking you're taking two tokens off a turn. Two tokens off a turn, yeah. And if if Haka or if Haha Joker's on anything but his top click, he takes ten points off. Right now, there is some senses rolls. Let's be fair. Um, yeah, you gotta roll six every once in a while. You have a seventeen percent chance to roll it. Which is like the uh, <clears throat> the first tip against uh, Hawkeye is senses can be pretty good if you can re-roll it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, because if he misses something initially, um, you know, that's not a key to count on, but that's something to think about, um, is if he can re-roll, uh, if you can re-roll your senses, uh, multiple times in a turn or even once, uh, making him miss can leave him dead in his tracks. Yeah. But don't die. Like it, all of the things that are on don't die. So even Ironheart, she has to roll twice a turn against a Hawkeye. That's okay. not. This is just against the Hawkeye, because Hawkeye gets to do his damage, so she has to roll for it, and then afterwards he does the Proxima Spear damage, so she rolls for it again. And then you have to think of the next character, Lockjaw. He's going to take two tokens off or take Invincible, and he's either going to take two tokens and Invincible, or take two damage, or if he takes Invincible, now he's immobile. Then there's yeah. Haha. If he's not on his first click, he's probably going to go past the line. Then okay. you have um, Daredevil. Daredevil's probably going to be immobile 90% of the game. Yeah. So unless you're using call-ins, which I can just body block with giant girls most of the time, because you're only going to be able to put out one thing. So you're not you're not going to be able to do much against the team, and they're just going to be able to keep running back and forth on you. And then when you do attack, I'm just going to use giant girls. Now I give three four five attacks on your characters a turn yeah so now this is one of those things where don't die is good against avengers um but it can also be bad right so this comes down to um are you a better avengers player or are you a better don't die player because if so so in this case right if you come out and you leave your Hawkeye, if you run out and do all this immobilization and take two tokens off of Lockjaw and kill an Ironheart, but you leave Hawkeye right there, uh, Hawkeye's going to die. <laughs> right? I mean, and, and, you know, I realize that that sounds silly, but, I mean, I've had, I watched this situation happen in Huntsville where Avengers was playing against a Don't Die team the Avengers player ran out, did all that cool stuff, right, that Lane just went over, and then he just left Hawkeye there. He didn't have a giant girl close by to, you know, sidestep, you know, protect him, bring him back, that sort of situation, right? Um, And Hawkeye just died, and the Don't Die player won. Um, So it it really comes down to are are you more comfortable with Avengers or Don't Die because don't die can withstand it, right? If you can withstand that initial salvo um, to some extent and pick off giant girls, so I mean, I think it, Tony, it's a good thing to point ring up would be the um, would be the uh, don't die team. Uh, yeah, also whales, whales too, because you know, like you were saying with the leech, um, like yeah. whales are pretty tough. So we, we'll, we'll, there's tough matchups for sure. Yeah, there's tough matchups, right? So. The, the thing is, is that... So in Don't Die, let's talk about Don't Die. Um, uh, Alex, are you there now? Yeah, he's here. He's here. Hey, Alex. Um, he's muted. He's muted. All right, that's fine. So... Um, I'm here. 
Yeah, so the my the version of the team that I played with Don't Die, and, you know, I think the other thing I thought about is that uh, folks are trying out things for post-retirement. Um, so point, point, whatever, two, three there is, if people are playing Hawkeye, Hawkeye is most likely going to retire. You need to use the uh, tools that are available to you pre, pre-retirement. Um, so I liked my version with Shifting Focus Deadpool. Um which does pretty well against um, um, Hawkeye. So if Hawkeye shoots Deadpool, he can make him immobile or do the pin damage, but then you heal it back up, and then you get the free attacks on Hawkeye. Um, so, it, you know, it's one of those things where if... Um, uh, Alex, you have, like, a Daredevil and uh, Deadpool and stuff handy? Uh, sure. So it, it's one of those things to where you can potentially um, do enough callouts to where um, with your Deadpool and Daredevil to um, maintain tempo against um, the Avengers team. So if, if Hawkeye is never out in the open... Sometimes you just have to be able to say, all right, well, I call out a Cyclops, and my three-point Cyclops is shooting a giant girl. So they haven't scored any points yet, maybe 10 off of Hawkeye, or off of uh, Haha Joker, maybe. Uh, And then I'm going to get the free attack off on... Hawkeye, and then Cyclops is going to go off the board. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's one of those things to where you have to kind of know what other how other folks in your area are going to be playing Avengers, and going to be, you know, how are they going to do things? Right? Can you outposition them with Avengers, or can you outposition them with a Don't Die team? Um, and the- and the risk with the don't die team in this particular scenario is you're going to be tempted to use Daredevil to just go smack the crap out of Hawkeye. But where Daredevil falters a bit is when you do have multiple attacks against him, which you will have with all these giant girls. Just be like, oh, hey, Hawk, uh, hey, uh, D- Daredevil, smack, smack, smack. And they're going to hit sixes. Um, I played the Don't Die team, a different variation of this, at Huntsville also, and I was amazed how many, how unlucky I was in some instances with Daredevil, where they would get sixes on those retails, where I didn't think they were going to hit, and uh, somehow they roll like a six and a two. And then if they didn't, they would just prop. Even if they hit, you know, they're not really trying to, even if they roll a nine, like a five and a four, they're going to prop out of that to try to hit, roll a six. So it's you're you're gonna be tempted to just be like, all right, I, I hypersonic in and I smack the crap out of you. As long as you can get away, you know, these guys are gonna come in and retail you and it, it could be very well that Daredevil's dead the next yeah. turn. Yeah, I mean and, and to be fair, at least Dare if Daredevil can kill Hawkeye, if he pushes onto click two mm-hmm. and you can call out uh, some sort of perplex to get him to five damage with um um with the venom pump, mm-hmm. and then go over there and smack him, um, then that's a possibility because you'll be thirteen on his sixteen. Um, just you know, just don't crit miss, um, which is sometimes easier said than done. Um, but yeah, I mean that's a situation where um, you just have to you just have to position smart with the don't die team. Yeah, you have to protect Hawkeye somehow. I mean, like, it's always tough to protect him because you're putting him so far out there yeah. on that first on that first move. Sure. But yeah, I mean, so I think you think if we're talking about um, going from how to run the team to how to go against the Hawkeye team, um, you know, we can talk about whales next. Um. um 
and we, when y'all get a chance, I I played against a pretty spicy anti Hawkeye thing yesterday. Okay, yeah, tell that us was, about uh, it. It was double Doctor Strange, uh, one at a hundred, one at fifty, Daredevil, and then a bunch of Tri Sentinels. Yeah, and it. I mean, it was kind of scary because I, I mean, I was probably too passive, but with the Mystics damage on Hawkeye and double perplex and energy shield. I mean, you, you, I was kind of having a hard time picking a target to want to go off on a big attack. Sure. Uh, uh, and then when I finally did, I got pulse waved. <laughs> in which, response. uh, which Dr. Strange was it? The, the, the chase Dr. Strange, the sheriff, sheriff strange, sheriff strange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they were doing the, the battle world, whatever, um, Baron double perplex on each other. Sure, 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 sure. And uh, uh, I even, you know, I mean, I I haven't split, played many games lately, but I tried Lane's trick and shot, ran a Cyclops out there and shot a. He was running Exo Specs, a Goblin Glider, um, and something else. And he was trying to equip both Strangers, so his team was a little slow to. Uh, but he, I mean, I couldn't kill. I wasn't seeing a way to destroy two objects turn one. <laughs> right. So he would get running shot on one of the strangers. He was trying to get um he, I played one game against him with a Unimine team and it I actually got that one won that one, but he was trying to set up a TK with the Exospecs and the and then have the running shot on the other one and TK him back. Mm-hmm. Um but it was mostly the Mystics and the Energy Shield and the double perplex that was hurting Hawkeye. <laughs> right. So so here's what I would say is, um, and this goes for Wales and the mystical theme team, right? And there's a few different variations of that mystical theme team that have mystics. Uh, you know, two share of strangers at 50, um, the, the bunch of tri-sentinels. Um, there was something else that I'm missing. Uh, Alex Wilder. Um, all, all of those kind of pieces, right? Now... What that really is going to come down to is who wins map. So if you put Hawkeye on the um, Star Trek Underground, you have a good chance. It's not unbeatable, or it's not completely unwinnable for Hawkeye. Um, but if it's a rock event, you can put him on the Rock Underground. Um but that really comes down to one of those situations to where if Avengers wins map and goes to an outdoor map um, with the extended starting areas, he's in pretty good shape. Um, Alex, I don't know if you have like uh, Genosha handy for maps. Oh, this is what you do. So, I mean, we can kind of talk about your example. Um, and talk about how Hawkeye does the uh, um, extended starting area situation. And were you were you playing Hawkeye against the team? Right, the something I was. similar, something similar to this. Yeah, I was pretty much running Lane's build, except that I don't, one big problem is I don't have a rusty ID card. <laughs> yeah, I, and so I'm okay with Leech. Um, I, I was I was really good with Leech yesterday. Um, you know. And a lot of those things is right. Uh, and Lane, feel free to disagree with me here. Because um, I love when you disagree with me. That's part of the fun. Um, you know, Rusty rusty Chamber. Uh, I'd say the big IDs for this team would be Cyclops, Gene, and Banshee. You could probably make arguments if you don't have a budget for some of these other ones, but these are pretty big. These are the big spicy ones anyways. Um, I, I agree. I, I do think Rusty is needed for the match. Like, that Rusty is not there for anything other than barrier. So yeah. if you happen to roll a crit miss, and they have a, um, say, a Sam Cap team, and you need to protect everybody, or, like, the main pieces. Like, you want to lose the giant girls, okay, I get it. But like you need to protect the Hawkeye and the Star Fox for a turn, and the Cap. Mm -hmm. You can call out with uh, one of them and just barrier up for a turn. Like yeah. if you have, if you lose map and you need a barrier, you have to sometimes. Right. That's what that Rusty's for. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it gives it gives you options. Sure. I mean, Iceman as well. The Fast Forces Iceman has barrier. No, he so doesn't. Go... He doesn't. I thought one of the Iceman does. That's that was going to be the one I was going to recommend in our next little part of the show, but. Um, oh. Yeah, so, not, not, I'm look. I'm pulling them up right now. See, none of the Ice Men have a barrier on their first click. Okay, well then the Rusty is definitely one that you can't drop. I would drop the Chamber or the Ice Man instead for anything else if you want to make a change. Sure. But I think the Rusty is very, very equal to some of these builds. Right. So, so Kurt, in in that situation. Um, uh, do you, how many how many tri sentinels was he running? And Alex, I don't know if you can pull up some tri sentinels or not. He was running two. Yeah, he had two of them, right? So that's sixty points, right? Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, Alex, if you have a tri sentinel handy, if not, that's okay. So the uh, the extended starting areas, right? He he probably would want to put his tri sentinels back here. Um. Now, keep in mind, with the Colossal Retaliators, you don't have to worry about uh, using the Spear. So you've got a full 8 range on these guys. Which, that's pretty far. Uh, when you ignore characters and whatnot. So, let me go ahead and put my little marker there real quick. So, what I, what I did yesterday... Um, and especially, so you mentioned something that was, which really keyed to me, is if the team is a little bit slow, okay, um, and I had this similar situation on, um, yesterday, where's the Hawkeye at, there he is, let's go ahead and move these guys off the board. This actually looks like a Heroclix board after we get done practicing in real life. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how the rest of the stuff that he had, Kurt, but this is just more of an example of um, what you can do uh, turn one um, instead. Um, let's go ahead. I like this third giant, the third Fast Forces Giant Girl option. Um, so, if you can withstand no, the circle these around so still the i was going to wear um it's still the same first turn right with this team you bring back the xl specs and the spear and you do this now oh, sorry dan uh, i i don't really want to interrupt but just is that set up legal with the revision to uh, how how you need to place characters? This, yes, yes, because it goes over to the left. No, no, it's not. You have to do this. No, you have to fill up. You know, it goes all four, doesn't it? No, you have to place it the most economical way possible. So you have to place those four first, then you have to fit her. Well, they really need to you, release you, a video on that. You can't do that, and then place her. No, you have to fill up with your small ones first. No, you do not. No, you do not. You have to and, fill up with your big ones first. It's one of those intense scenarios. Uh, they plan, I believe, doing something in the comprehensive to explain it a little sure. bit better. But yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's you've got to you've like got to fill it out to fit the giant girl first, and yeah. then you go to the second. Well, one. they need to do it in the comprehensive then. So whatever, yeah. it's the same situation. This this giant girl ends up here. That one ends up there. Um, I mean, the, the, the point is, is that it's still kind of the same idea. Uh, that one can actually end up there. Um, so, this one. yeah. So what I was able to do, um, yesterday was you can go ahead and, uh, uh, sidestep with Star Fox, get a, and place old man here. Um, and get a triple perplex into Star Fox's defense. Um, now, I mean, it depends. If, if they can come over here, now this is really tricky. If they can come over here and turn one, shoot your Star Fox into the corner of the map and kill him, don't don't do that. So, uh, I mean, this team has some pretty good reach, but they would have to be able to get like a uh, chase Cyclops 
all the way to here, turn one. Because um, just knocking Star Fox to his stop click is not a huge deal. Um, at least when we're getting ready to show this next turn. Um, so they do their first turn. It, Whatever they do, it doesn't really matter uh, to me uh, what they do. Uh, because turn two... Um, you sidestep the giant girl to here. Again, we're assuming that you don't get any of your uh, perplexes or any or your leaderships off, right? Worst case scenario. So sidestep to there. You know, sidestep to here. Uh, carrying Masterson if you'd like. Uh, don't carry Masterson. Don't do that. Um, and same thing. You TK out. Uh, well, you can move one into place. Uh, sorry, you would sidestep and then move the giant girl out for prob. So Are they not moving up against you? If they move up, then they die on this side of the map. Well, I'm saying, are they not going to get their exospecs? Or yeah, their... so I, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't care what they do turn one. On an outdoor... Okay. on an outdoor, right. I don't care what they do with an outdoor map on an outdoor map with Colossals. So, uh, for first turn, just playing a scenario out, this giant girl wasn't there, right? Uh, she was there after she dropped off the thing, yeah. Okay. Or this is your second turn. I get you, I get you, I get you. Okay. Yeah, so this is the second turn. We move out with our move our prob out. Because um, realistically, I would think that they would try to start moving into, like, elevation and make make Hawkeye actually have to work. Well, it doesn't it doesn't matter with the Colossals, right? Because we're an outdoor map, right? The the whole eight thing is a big deal, right? So you're eight from there, right? You're seven from there, right? You're you're everywhere that you're everywhere that's relevant with Hawkeye. So, and I think this will get to my point of this team is a high theme. So if this team puts Hawkeye on the underground, it could be a tough day for... Because the giant girls could just die from a tri-sentinel shooting blocking, um, that sort of thing, right? So we move up the giant girl to do the probs, and Masterson to do the probs. We TK out Hawkeye with our third action. Right, one, two, three, four, five... Six. This might even be a situation, Lane, where you call in Gene, right? Yes. Yeah. Or you can just TK with Star Fox. Well, no, because I need to get up one more square to get to eight out. Oh, then yes. Yeah, so go up three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm one square kind of short of where I want to be. So that was our third action, right? We triple perplex his attack. So you're going to be uh, 14, right, uh, Kurt? So you just go down here. You shoot two tri sentinels. I mean, you, to that point, at that point, it's still you only need a six. Yeah, you need a six. 14 and they at worst case it's a seven if they put a uh, share of strange perplex into him so again that comes down to it's 60 versus 65 uh, points wise so now you can come back so often at this point Hawkeye has done his job um, so you can come back and shoot a shoot Daredevil, and then shoot a Strange, um, and then um, just take your Mystics and your push, because after that first salvo, you probably want Hawkeye to be on his sidestep RCE clicks. So now you've got a whole Star Fox Giant Girl party um, going on over here. So I think, so what I would say to say all this, because a lot of this is like, wow, this is why Avengers are really good. Um, and 
it is because it has a 50-50 chance in a lot of situations or just a roll-off of killing these giant colossal teams. Um, what we just did here with the uh, with the uh, Tri-Sentinels is what you do with the versus the Whales. Um, you know, you have to... There's a way you can... Um, you can count your squares out with how far the Whales can go out. And then count like two or three more because you'd be very surprised with how mobile they are. Yeah, so I mean, they can go... <laughs> they, they can move five and then they can sidestep and then they have Giant Reach three. Um, so that's why I had Leech on the team was to be able to have Old Man up a little bit uh, to call out Leech. Because what Tyler will do will, or any of the whale players will call out uh, Brood X or Rare Professor X for the shape change on turn one. So that he has five shape changes in which to uh, uh, kill, um, or which to roll out of. So <clears throat> in this situation where I can call out Leech, uh, I can get Leech within four. Um outwit both shape uh, outwit both shape changes and then have old man outwit one of the invincibles you then proxima spear one of the whales for four damage with masterson uh and then you go kill all of the retail and hopefully they don't all hit uh shape change three of them or two of them have shape change so that's kind of the problem is that of, and why you see Avengers doing so well is that it faces teams that have a lot of Colossals and they go outdoors. Because Avengers is 9, the Mystics team in Wales could be 8 or 7 or 6. Um, and there's charts out there as far as plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Whenever you get into like plus 3, it's very favorable for um, Avengers to win map and take you outdoors and shoot all those Colossals. Um, Here's a, a question also. Um, so, what about Avengers against like Unimind or like Unimind Lockjaw? <coughs> so, so that was the second part of the class. Yeah, that's kind of the second part of the class, right? What what teams have a high percentage of winning against Avengers? And uh, Uni Lockjaw is pretty much number one on that list for me. Um, I, I I can say personally I've never lost to Avengers playing um, Uni Lockjaw. Uh, there's a couple out of, of how, out of how many? Um, let's see. I've played it. I played it in practice quite a bit. So are you talking about in just actual competitions? Well, are we talking with spear or without spear? With the spear. Okay, I'm just curious. Like it's. I want to make sure everyone knows like how many you've encountered. So it's not like, yeah, I've never lost because I've played one. You know? No, I think I've played it five or, five, or, five or so times and probably twice with the spear lane and like six or seven times overall with, with the spear and without the spear. Um, and it also depends on what version of Unimine you're talking about. Right, so okay. I think the, the, the version of Unimine we'd be talking about is Uni Lockjaw, Groot, Two Suited Henchmen, Five IDs, uh, Baby Symbiote, and a um, the Special Terrain. The uh, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if you're talking if you're talking about a team like Unimine with Unseen, that's probably a wor that's a worse matchup. At least to me, it is because unseen. He relies a lot on super senses, and if you got precision strike, it's well. He's got a five through six, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that could be one of the teams that we go ahead and share as kind of anti uh, Hawkeye, not the unseen version necessarily, but uh, right. Um, let's go ahead and clear this out. Um, so let's do. Um, Let's go ahead and do. Uh, I need a uni lockjaw. Uh, he's, up the, he's, he's up at the top. I got you. Oh, there you go. You, yeah, uni lockjaw, uh, Groot, uh, Flora, um, four IDs, uh, and the Wakanda map bonus. 
which is kind of hard, kind of hard to show the Wakanda map bonus uh, <laughs> on the map, but. Uh... And that's the once per game you get to. We're assuming you're losing map during this, right? Or are we gonna play with you anyway, map? Uh, you you pretty much gotta assume that you're gonna lose map. Um, and Avengers would not take you to um, Genosha if they do. That's not smart of them to do. Um, yeah, probably a muck time. Is that where you would have taken uh, Uni Lockjaw Two Lane? Uh, yes. So this team. So would it, have, I uh, I will say this with the. Yeah, you you cut you you cut out you cut out a little bit their lane if you could repeat yourself. I will say this with the old symbiote now being able. He cut out again. For yeah, me. the the old symbiote is able to be destroyed. So I would. Yep. He's leaving us in suspense here. Lane, your 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 point is not making it across. There he goes. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So what I said is, I would first turn every time against a Uni Lockjaw team, destroy the symbiote, hundred percent. I don't care what else he's thrown in the game, but that needs to go. I would call out Cyclops with uh, Star Fox and perplex double perplexes range, running shot, shoot it. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. And that goes against uh, other teams like Goblin Gang. If those players yeah. still exist, uh, Black. I don't think Black Panther's running symbiote. He's but running, if you're running, he's if you're running, running to full point Black Panther, he probably is. Uh, he's probably running. He could run the mirror too, right? Yeah. Um, which I still cannot. I still cannot recommend um, playing the mirror. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the thing. So there's yeah, a. I'll set, up, there's I'll set a, up my team against yours. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. there. So there's a decision point to be made here, right? So for this month, um, for this month of WKOs, it can be tough to let Uni have his shape change, um, and have all the other points. Um, so I want to say, what's the other one? The Loki staff. Uh, Loki staff is 12 points and it's indestructible um, but there's also the situation to where um, they can also steal your object I, I will ask that question is is everyone familiar with how uh, an object gets stolen from across the map not necessarily destroyed yeah bringing over Sam Cap and have Sam Cap just take it uh, if you're not playing Sam Cap uh, so somebody pick it up. So okay. you can. So with object attacks, um, let me just set up this team, and I just want to run through this as an example. Um, uh, you need pretty you a, a prep to pretty able to do this. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's just talk about the exo specs. I know the exo specs can be destroyed, but I'll show this example. Um, and there's only a few situations where this is a option. So uni, so Lockjaw will TK out one, two, three, four, five, six, um, and then uni, because you typically can't TK after you've been TK'd, but Jean can be then be called out, and you can make her range ten. In which case, she can then power TK back the specs all the way back. Um, and then for things that are uh, equip any, uh, you can then equip it to something on your force, assuming that you have something. I'm just using this as an example. Um, and that could be a situation where you TK it back. Um, and I don't know anybody could equip it right if you have the suited henchman version uh, they could equip it um, and if it's unequipped KO uh, you now got opponents points equipped to your force if they KO you 
just depending on the object. Yeah, the, you'd primarily only want to do this, I would think, if it's indestructible, because you obviously can't destroy it. Yeah, if it's, indes if it's indestructible, obviously not with the specs, but... Because if it's exospecs, I mean, as much as I'm going to be tempted to steal it, going up, what is it, 12 points? Is usually better, 12 for 3, yeah. Yeah, I, I would rather take the 12 points, because that gives me breathing room when it comes to calling in IDs. That gives me four student IDs, or, the, or I guess three after I call a gene. And that gives me a little bit of breathing room, especially against teams like Don't Die Teams. So if you're playing against a Joker team, it's all right. I'm, it's going to be difficult to take out Daredevil and Joker, or you know, I'm going to be. It's going to be a low scoring affair usually. So if that means I could hop in and I would probably want to snipe the Exospecs as opposed to stealing it, just because that puts me up twelve points. Yeah, nine points. Sure. But if you got a situation to where you know they have a mirror or something like that that's indestructible, you you can steal it um, with certain teams. Um, Avengers is really good at going and destroying it. Um, Uni is actually equipped pretty well to uh, steal it or destroy it, depending. Um, so Uni comes down to a situation where if they uh, shoot your symbiote um, or something like that, and it really comes down to Lane, you're making me, and this is the other point, is not everybody plays Lane. Um, and this was a point that we were talking about in our chat. Um, we've talked a lot about on the podcast as far as destroying objects. Um, but is it worth the risk to use a more expensive object like, say, Loki Staff um, versus will your opponent take that risk? And that's going to be a localized um, threat assessment, unless you're local to uh, Lane or Alex, I suppose. No chuckles there, Lane? I mean... <laughs> each their own right or good luck yeah so um so that goes back to my point of this month of wkos um you know an indestructible object could be worth it for uni or uh you could take the risk with the baby symbiote um because the only person people that have actually destroyed my objects have been sam and lane uh in competition so far um None of my other opponents have done it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that other than they just haven't done it. Even though we've talked openly about having folks destroy them. But I think it's it's something that I think is going to catch on since WizKids has clearly determined that equipment is the new resource. Like That's just going to be their go-to. They're going to keep popping out equipment. And it's going to be one of those, all right, this is... I, I think it's just it's taking a little bit to spread out to uh, the more casual players or the players that you know only go to like one competitive event a, a year or two. But I think it eventually, as more and more podcasts talk about it and people see it more and more at competitions, it will be more popularized, and you should start expecting it. Right. So <clears throat> I would say from my point this month is that uh, get the. Uh, uh, Get the Remaker Ring. That That's the goal for the uni player this month is uh, get the uh, Shape Change Poison Ring. Because it is indestructible. Mm -hmm. um, so that I also, would, go now ahead. I also expect Kurt and all of you guys, I'm expecting you guys to shoot some objects if I see you at a competition. Yeah. So, hey, we've, talk, we've talked about that. Kurt, we're probably actually the closest to you to, to see you shoot some stuff, right? You guys coming to Georgia <laughs> next week? <laughs> uh, so do you play in Georgia? Yeah. yeah I'm in uh, Carrollton. I, I should be at States, I believe. Yeah, the, the qualifier's in uh, Decatur at Challengers. Mm -hmm. It's next weekend. Because I'm just up the road. I'm up in Tennessee. Yeah. So Alex, you might want to run down there to their qualifier next week. <laughs> well, I'm already going to Leeds on the 16th for oh. WKO. So. Yeah, I'll be at Leeds. 
that's where I was practicing there, where I was talking about some of the guys from over there. We got together. Nice. He's always does sealed though. So yeah, their WKO is going to be sealed. They're running a win a map. Um, but it's, uh, it's during the week. I mean, the, the weekly win a map at like right after work, that's a hard, that's an hour and a half drive. <laughs> I mean, for me, I mean, I, right. y'all that's, you know, for you guys, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's like four hours for me. That's tough for after work, but yeah. at, at any rate, right? So it, it comes down to um, states and Ford. Uni probably adjust his build to um, include the re, the Remaker ring, and I really hope I'm saying that right. Um, but for this month, it's either Baby Symbiote or probably Loki staff if you're worried about them shooting your objects. And sometimes you just got to risk it for the biscuit. I mean, <laughs> there, there, there's there got to be an acceptable risk, right? So th- I think really what I want to leave you with as a thinking point um, at the end of this class is do you play one of these counter builds or, or I wouldn't call it a counter build or a team that has tools in its toolbox to go against Avengers or do you just play Avengers? Um, you know, so that's uh, that's up to you. I don't even. What's the thing there? The the rest of the story, or something like that. One of those famous sort of lines from uh, Unsolved Mysteries, or whatever. Um, so we got a jet handy, Alex. Are you there? Hello, hello. Oh. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you have a jet handy. Oh, yes, sorry. What happened to our jet? I don't know. I don't have a jet. No, we can, we're can. we not the Blackbird. The oh, jet. you're talking about a jet. You mean All the right. plane. It's a jet. It's a jet plane. It's an invisible plane. One, two, three, four. He needs a symbiote, too. Put one at the bottom of the map. You could just use the old one for yeah. icon, icon purposes. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and play out my first turn. Yeah. Which is going to be stupid. All right. So what I would do first turn, um, call out Cyclops. I would then... Perplex up his range by two. And that's when I would tell you you're cheating, Lane, because you got to perplex up his movement as well. Uh, I would count it out first. Hold on, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, so you yeah, have see. to have you have to have old man uh, help him out there. That's fine. Um, so what I would do. Every time you guys see Lane, you are now officially allowed to give Lane hard time about anything. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the issue is he's going to steal your exospecs if you shoot his thing, which is fine. You don't really need Star Fox to have the exospecs. It's nice, but it's not needed. So <clears throat> first thing, you call out and you... Uh, Move her one, two, three, four, five, six. Pick this up. Um, sidestep this one. See here. Perplex up range and movement. So movement to five, range to ten. Running shot one, two, three, four, five. Actually, Lane, don't don't you don't you'd have to go range to an eleven, right? No, because one, you two, you three. run outside of oh four. yeah 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 range to right. an eleven yeah. Um, to be fair, that's what Lane did to Sam in the actual competition at Huntsville. So, uh, no, I didn't. Sam put hers one farther out. Oh, she did. Gotcha. Yeah, she put it one farther out so that she could shoot mine without having to perplex anything. Gotcha. Yeah, she she put hers six squares out instead of five. Gotcha. Um, actually, now that I see this, I would probably set this up different. Uh, I would go like this. 
We still have to have old man able to perplex. I know. I would do it like that, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would have the object. I would have her go pick up the object for uh, Hawkeye in there and then sidestep back in, placing it into Hawkeye Square. I'd have this one sidestep carrying old man to here. Well, you want to put him into, yeah. Well, stealth doesn't really matter. There, there probably. Um, call out the dude, perplex and perplex. Uh, Hawkeye equipped, so that's three actions. Correct. One, two, three, and then the fourth would be shooting over there. Um, yeah, we get it, and then he runs off. He sidesteps off. See, but that's where I don't know if that's what I want to do. But I probably do. I probably sidestep. Yeah, you you don't, could. You don't want to give up fifty points. Yeah. But if I do, so yours is gone. But then you TK out six and shoot him. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You would have to drop power cosmic. So what I was thinking is well, to not do... to not shoot the. Uh, uh... You, I'd probably just shoot the XL specs with Uni. That's what I'm saying. I would, I could possibly keep him on the battlefield and then sidestep carry the XL specs and be holding them. Yeah, in which case, I would. You say, have to perplex. Yeah, which is not a huge deal. Um, then I can kill you the next turn if you perplex. Um. So you can also double perplex your range, and just shoot old the cap so then you have to get gene gray within eight but you don't kill him um four takes him off of outwit though which is all that matters well yeah and it takes him off of leadership which is huge for um avengers and he's only a 17 so it's a six I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I just wanted yeah. To so I think is... I think what I would do in this turn, right, is if you left Cyclops out there, um, there. So what are you what are you going to end up doing? Let's just. I'm, let's just I'm not going to put him on the battlefield. You're going to leave him. You're going to get rid of him. Yeah, you can take the exo specs and equip it to nobody. No one. Right. Yeah. Um. So I, I would equip just it to Unimind eventually. Yeah, probably. But I probably would just destroy them, right? Because now it's uh, three to four, and it could just be... Um, so in this case, right, it probably, it probably just ends up being um, 12, 15 to four. Because Uni doesn't so want... have Uni doesn't have to drop power cosmic to shoot your exo specs. So you're not tempted at all to equip exo specs on Uni. Not with as slow as it would be. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that that gives you able to permanently pick super senses or whatever else. Well, you have Cersei, so you could pur purposely pick shape change permanently. And then no, use that so and it, whatever. you don't. You, you have, have Cersei. You have Prime Thanos. Oh, you don't have Cersei. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, you have Prime Thanos, probably Star Fox and Makari. Um, I mean, if you have the big Thanos, uh, you can sidestep back. Um, so yeah, I would TK out, and I would probably use the big Thanos to have sidestep. And then just sidestep back. So destroyer, TK it out. Let's, I mean, re-roll it with the dog. Uh, TK with the doggo. Uh, unless I roll a six with the dog, in which case I don't do that. Um. Proxima Spear is indestructible, right? Correct. At least that's what the card says. So then I might just pick up the Proxima Spear or the Exo Specs and carry them back. Mm, that's tough. Well, he could steal the spear, which you would absolutely wouldn't want, right? 
Yeah, you wouldn't you, you wouldn't want me to steal your spear and pick it up. I can pick it up with the sidestep from Uni. So I'm still holding it. So if you don't if you don't pick up the spear, I'm gonna steal the spear and then put it in Uni Square and then well, sidestep. What I'm saying is so I could also not equip the spear and I can go grab the exospecs instead of equipping. So, I, see what you're, I see what you're saying. Yeah, placing it in his square, and then this one just goes means, and gets the exospecs. But that means you're not you're not using Hawkeye's second turn or with the spear. That's fine. What is he doing turn two? Uh, what am I doing turn two? Well, I'm okay. So so say I instead of equipping, I carry the exospecs back. Mm -hmm. They're underneath. Uh, so I R5. think I think Lane oh. what what instead of kind of rambling on this one just a little bit is the Hawkeye player going to know to adjust that of course we're teaching these guys to do that um, yeah. but I've never seen a Hawkeye player do what you just said to do yeah and well, I, I, now I, these four guys know and then the rest of them will know when they watch the recording and, yeah. and, and by the way everyone this is very much a peek into our practice, practice sessions where we're like, well, I do this. Well, you know what? I think I'll do this this time. Yeah. That's pretty much how our practice sessions go. Uh, there's usually a lot more cursing and... Uh, a little what, bit. Yeah, whatnot, so... <laughs> <laughs> or a lot more of, well, roll it out. Let's see you do that. Yeah, I'm All like, right, so, you Dan, can't, you say, can't do that. You, that uh... you, shoot, you shoot my... Um... Well, I probably wouldn't try to shoot your old man, right? Um, there you can't shoot my old man, anyways. Well, I can. I can pick running shot and go buck wild, but that's probably not. No, advisable. you can't. He's in his starting zone. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, then so it, it just comes down to at that point. Um, it, it just comes down to at that point. Then I probably just TK up, or then I probably just don't even TK up correction then if you did that then i wouldn't even tk up i would leave lockjaw on one and just pack him up to there and then i would um one two three uh move group to there because well i'd probably start up group one square higher because i want group to end up there um to where you have to be on this diagonal here to shoot him um and then i would move the flora um that, that clips that corner no it doesn't that's the direct diagonal all right well it's then, just the things messed up oh, that's your fault oh, no, there, we go. there we go now we'll just move him up one more that makes it easier gosh dang it why does Groot have to be so big lane i don't know i'm just telling you but still it makes it to where he has a little bit of protection, right? You have to come at least somewhere. Or I guess you could just put him in the back corner of the map. That's probably better than if you're going that route. So at least eight is here. Into your area, yeah. Yeah, you're all up in my business. And you, Uni likes for somebody to get up in the business. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so then in that case, if you did that lane, I would just do this. That's that's it. And then I would proceed to send Cyclopses and stuff at your giant girls from there. Yeah, so I mean this would be this would be a battle. It would come down to positioning and can I get my stuff where it needs to be. Right. So my my next turn I would probably just uh sidestep, equip both of them. Well, yeah, Star Fox equipped, he equipped, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then sidestep this lady, sidestep this lady, uh, move, and move. Uh, probably sidestep, ooh, hold on, I have to change that. I'd probably sidestep this one up to here, and then sidestep carry. Yeah, I think you got it. That makes sense. And then I'd say go. 
Yeah. So in which case, right? All I and this is, and, you, and you guys can will see me do this in a competition. Um, I I can just sit here, call out a cyclops to here, and go one, one two three four. Shoot that gal. Sidestep him off the board. Yeah. Because now the points are now in my favor. Because what that's seven to ten. I haven't done anything. I haven't dropped my power cosmic. I'm maintaining senses now. And you've had two rolls on your flora to not get killed. Right, potentially. Uh, Groot's still alive. He's still doing his thing. Now Lane's gonna. Uh, the Avengers player would have to commit to kill the guy, right? Um, there's also uh, where um, you can try to pick energy explosion with uh, the Borker Lockjaw, and if he rolls a two, right, he, you know, he Borkity Borks out and uh, gets a big EE off. Um, you know, or if you're planning on doing that with the team, um, carry the uh, Bounty Storm. Um, that's another great tool to inspire uh, Lockjaw with um, Energy Explosion. He, in this case, right, Lane, uh, if Lane did that and I had that, right, it's all this back and forth, right, and no one can ever prepare you for ever, every situation, right? Um, so Lockjaw can get inspired with EE, um, go to here, shoot the big gals, or actually go back one, shoot the big gals, um, and then uh, Storm, um, Big Storm... She could get there and shoot one more. And, yeah. she, and she's fine because she can get off the board. Now, my admittedly, my positioning's a little bit wonky here. Um, but that's where it comes down to practice and um, running through the reps on teams like this. But it's about tools in the toolboxes, right? So, like, uh, Bounty Storm is great for Goblin King... Um, but she's also great for this team against Avengers because she inspires the energy explosion on Lockjaw. Um, now, if Lockjaw misses uh, the 7 and the 8, uh, you know, Uni needs to take Prob. Um, Uni probably has to drop Power Cosmic um, and get another Perplex on the uh, attack. Um, but it all depends on what you roll on to, right? You can... Pick Pra with Uni, um, and then pick Running Shot with Lockjaw. See if you roll the two before you call out Storm. And if you roll the two, get the Prob, get the plus one stats, and get the Energy Explosion, uh, you're pretty good. Um, you know, because it's going to be hard for them to take all six off of Lockjaw if there's only one Fast Forces Giant Girl left. And that comes down to you've got 20, 30 points here between the two, Groot and the Flora. There's 50 points here with the Giant Girls. If you can then maintain Uni Lockjaw from dying the rest of the game, to whereas Uni literally goes back to here and Lockjaw goes to here and picks that Invincible that we talked about, uh, they have to come over. If they don't come over, or if they take their time, and you're ahead on points after these guys have died, you'll win because it's fifty to thirty wins, and you know, a wins a win, right? Yeah. You know, if if four of these girls die, right, you can win by three points, and that's happened. It's not. It's not usually what happens for me, and most of the time, is that. A player will get, um, uh, they'll have to commit, right? They either lose or they're either going to, and what I like to say in that situation, and, and I tell this into practice, is either you're going to lose or you're going to lose. Um, and the point being there is if you commit and get something done, you can win. But if you don't do anything, you're going to lose. If you do something and it works out, you might win, but you might lose too. But certainly if you don't do anything and just stay over here after that turn, 
you're going to lose. Right? So it's thinking about a situation to where can you make the other team, other player get into a lose-lose situation. Either he loses by doing nothing or he loses by committing to something that could make him win but is not statistically sort of favorable for him to win. Yeah, so my 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 game plan against this is you have to go all out. You can't just sit back against a uni team. So you just have to go you have to go in and just start taking shots. You can't not. So my my plan with this game would have been just go all out into attacks and start going. Make my call outs, make my attacks. He doesn't have shape change now, so you have to get through super senses or is invincible. You always deal the impen penetrating damage unless you can get back and are you don't always do the penetrating damage. Sometimes you can make him immobile if you can get out of his range or make him shoot a giant girl or two to even have a shot on you. So you can you can ping him down if you can stay safe, but you have to do it the right way. Um, and that's but you're risking putting your stuff on the line. Like you can't you can't not go after this team. Like he said, you can just sit back and run away and do that. But you have more soft points on the team than the uni yep. lockjaw player does. It's a, it's a hard fight for the Haw Hawkeye player. Like you have to go, you have to go balls to the wall. You can't not, you can't not go all out. You can't try to play safe against this team. Because he has, this, he really, as far as you know, he has the uni the uni team has a superior range essentially. Yeah. And once you kill the Thanos, then you can kind of back off. But you have to kill the Thanos. Yeah, and hopefully it, both of the Thanos is. Yeah, I mean, even if you can get him popped, right? Yeah. And then you have to avoid a really angry dog who's got plus one to stats. Yeah. I mean, Lockjaw and a remaining Eternal can clean up the team if Hawkeye is dead. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I, I've had that happen more than once when the, when the X-Men were big, the Blackbird first came out. I lost Uni, lost Thanos, uh, Star Fox on his last click, and the dog cleaned up the team. Like, literally, I'd killed the bird with Uni, lost Uni, and then I killed the Cyclops, two Wolverines, Mora, the tank, um, all at once. Not all at once, but throughout the remaining turns of the game, is what I should say. So guys, I have set aside two hours for this. I do have to step away. So if you have any more questions for me, PM me. I don't mind. Yeah, feel free to ask that. in our patron chat. Um, yeah. I think we are two hours in, so um, I thank Lane for joining. I, I have one more little bit to show with the... Thanks for joining, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining, Lane. Um, I have one more bit to, join, to show with um, Blackbird and a first turn barrier scenario. Um, and then Alex, did you have something? Yeah, I was tailoring, I have an, a, a strategy I've been working on against Hawkeye. It is not really, it's for those who don't really want to go X-Men or Uni. You know, there's a lot of people that just don't want to play just the top meta, uh, like top top. And so their one keyword specifically that is creeping up is soldier thanks to the Captain Marvel set and EarthX. And so there's a couple strategies I wanted to talk about with that and a couple little pieces that, while it won't shut down Hawkeye, it might make your team, even if it's not Soldier, just normal team, it might make it enough to kind of thwart him a little bit. I, I, but, uh, and, I, and I haven't heard this one from Alex yet, so I might uh, I might be shooting Alex down here, so... I'm <laughs> probably just, i'm just kidding so go ahead alex yeah, um, and, and i appreciate you guys so hold on let's pause here real quick uh do you guys have any questions at this point um i have one that's kind of locally based because ajax is actually seeing some play in my area oh man props to so, that guy uh, joe tell me is your area have a lot of local breweries and places where people <laughs> started drinking and decided, hey man, Ajax really needs to be the. I'm just kidding. Um, so, hey, 
I know how we beat me. I was playing an overdrive team that week. I don't know how we beat anybody else, but um, so it's it's been kind of a concern in playtesting going forward. So I, I would say my so is it cosmic or eternal? Is he playing Ajax Uni or Ajax other um, stuff? That team it was Ajax Star Fox Lockjaw, and I want to say there was a Groot on there, and he had um. Millionaire for Star Fox on his team. Nice. Um, so, the the best advice that I could give is defer. Just remember that you can defer. You get, uh, sorry to interrupt. You guys talk for a second. I got to be right back. Sorry. Okay, you're fine. So what what I would say there is is you can defer, Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that comes down to. Look at his build sheet before you roll off. Okay? Um, Because Hawkeye can still be good without his spear, or Uni can be good without his symbiote, depending on how much research he has put into... um, Depending on how much research he has put into his map setup and his map choices, uh, he may not have a, a map that's advantageous... For him versus you, so you might be okay to defer, um, or just go yeah. without your objects, right? Because here's the thing, I, and for and those, I know you, uh, I'm recording my whole screen, um, so um, the uh, I'm, I have Ajax pulled up here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, he takes a six damage side blast. Um, I mean, Joe, are you thinking about running... If you want to say, are you thinking about running Uni or uh, uh, something else? Um, I've been playing around with actually a Hydro Avengers Hawkeye team. Sure. Um, uh, which I haven't I haven't been able to get it to work that well, so I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, but it's... I've, you know, I've been playing Overdrive teams for a while, and Ajax has been a reason to go away from that for me. Sure, no, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, so what I would say is that Ajax takes a six damage side blast to, to get hit, and that's that's doable by a lot of teams. Um, yeah, no, that's what I mean. I was looking at Ajax myself, and then I just looked at that and was just like, no, <laughs> this this isn't good like i said i really have no idea how he won the other games that he played at the one of i went to but since he wound up winning the tournament i'm sure that player is going to keep playing it sure at rock events in the area. yeah and so, he has teammates who might do the same yeah so i mean you know it's funny that you mentioned that so uh, ajax Star Fox, and the new isaac um would be pretty sweet together as an eternal theme team, um, maybe some thugs or something like that. Um, but what I would say is take a look at his maps and, and be prepared to defer. Okay. Because um, if you're playing Overdrive, Overdrive can get around a lot of maps. Um, but um, you know, if, yeah, no, and, if, and if you win map, just be prepared to shoot him with a six damage side blast. I like Ajax. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of all of the Eternals, obviously, but uh, Ajax is pretty squishy for what he gives you. Okay. You know, and that comes down to if he places the object on your side of the map, is he going to be able to destroy him and get up on points before you can get there? Uh, yeah, no, I could. I mean, against the overdrive team, I just had heavy objects, so he just, you know, I couldn't make my charged up. Um, but it's been, you know, like I said one of my concerns is if I'm playing Hawkeye, uh, I'm probably going to be down, and I don't know what maps he's going to have. Yeah, so, so I'd say if you're going to play Hawkeye, just you have to go, you know, you just have to be prepared to go without the spear. Um because a lot of what you said, uh, that, that other stuff on that team is pretty squishy. Um, you know, you can probably, like we've talked about, get Hawkeye's value without the spear. In general. Um, so, uh, while, Danny, yeah, go ahead. 
don't know. I was just wanted to say I, I um I have to go too. So I just wanted to say um, thank you. This has been helpful and informative. Yeah, but I, yeah. I have to uh, get going. No, no problem. You know, I, I I didn't know if this was going to take an hour or two hours or even longer. Uh, you know, I want to be able to show you guys this, and I'll have this uploaded uh, here in the next day or so, so you can watch the rest of it. Uh, we'll have X Men and Alex's thing left. So. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, we'll have some more content. So thanks for joining. Thanks. Um, so while Alex has stepped away, let me go ahead and just show the X Men. I'm here. No, oh, you're at, you're back. Well, let me go ahead and show the X Men thing since we've already got it up here. Okay. Um, the X Men thing is pretty straightforward, and you've even seen this alluded to uh, on some of the uh, forums. Um, what um, and what I would say is the value that I want to add is the example Blackbird build that I think can do well still, um, and then what the placement would be on this map now. Lane admittedly did have a little bit of a fuss with me about, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, well, I'm just, it was one of those things where well, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to do that. You no, know, it's like, okay, Lane, does, does the black, does the Avengers player know what you're getting ready to do? Probably not. And, and it's one thing thinking about what we're doing in practice as opposed to being there and being like, well, I'm going to do that. Like you can't, obviously exclaim that you have to wait until it's your turn and it, it, it's obviously a lot different especially for people who aren't as fluent in competitions as like you dan like i'm obviously not as fluent in competitions as you are so saying something in practice doesn't necessarily translate for someone like me where i'm out actually playing because it's easier to look at something to rock uh, you know at roll 20 yeah. As opposed to being a person and like in the heat of the moment and you're round four and you're starving. So Yeah. Yeah. I could probably have a whole nother two hour session on how to prep your prep your body for uh, uh playing events. There you go. There's next month's session. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll meet at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Daniel workout plan. Um so you know, so assuming that the Avengers does their, let's go to the right side of the screen. Assuming Avengers does their first turn pickup thing, thinking it's going to be a pretty easy situation. Um, uh, so what we've, what we've, what folks have seen talked about is probably the Headmaster Iceman. Um, so you can have a lot of perplexes into your defense. That's one of the things that Hawkeye. It can be a problem for Hawkeye. Um, so. In this situation, um, you go sidestep, carry the tank, sidestep Wolverine, sidestep Cyclops. So now you don't carry the tank, and I think a lot of people miss that on the tank that it follows you, it's not being carried. It can still do actions after being carried. So your your first, then you sidestep up Mora, sidestep Mora to there. Um, this is why I have all these big giant barrier, all these bunch of barriers up here. So call out the uncommon Iceman. That's one action. You now have three chances at barrier. Um, the tank can do its barrier here. Right, because, uh, and I think the thing is, is that the Avengers absolutely have to maintain first turn immunity, or the Blackbird does its downtown shot with its Cyclops, mm -hmm. uh, which Lane has shown that on uh, stream several times. Um, I'd go back and watch some of his videos over the summer. So the tank did barrier. Um, and actually got to call it out with this other Cyclops. Sorry. I knew I had something backwards. Uh, and don't forget that you also spin up your dial with this stuff as well. So you can real boy in stuff with uh, turn two. The point is, is that they take you to a muck time. And this is really sitting down with some of the other maps that they typically would play. Um, and... Figuring out what works best for you. 
Um, so now in this situation, if they can bust through these single lines of barrier, that goes back to calling out the Cyclops and getting up his range to even shoot through a barrier. Um, but this is how you sit down, and the, the kind of the point is this is why you sit down, take a look at maps, and figure out how the Headmaster Iceman would work. And given that Amok Time is one of the more popular ones, that's the one I wanted to feature in this tidbit. Um, so now Hawkeye has to be able to get to that line to start shooting you, or he has to get to that line, uh, or that line to start shooting you, um, which is not a great odds for him, right? Because then he has to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, and I don't even know if he can get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you max out his movement. Um, so point being, this is not, he can't quite get there. Um, and then on other maps that are um, the extended starting areas, keep in mind the X-Men don't have any Colossals to shoot over, uh, so the barrier tactic is effective. Yeah, and so keep, keep in mind that this translates also to other teams, like a don't die team, typically most of them don't have Colossals. Uh, some of your Sam Cap teams don't have Colossals. So if you want to survive that first turn barrage, this is something that you could do, is have that, uh, Iceman, uh, that Iceman ID card chilling on the back. Because it's a good ID card anyway. It's not like you're wasting it on barrier. If you don't use it for barrier, cool, you got a cool pulse wave call in or you've got a yeah. in cap call in or something like that yeah. or a lockjaw. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, and then from here, right, this is how you then do the downtown shot. Um, your other Cyclops, your Cyclops can then uh, sidestep out, running shot, um, throw the tank, bring back out Hawkeye, then kill Hawkeye. And then you go into the situation where your bird has survived your entire team over here has survived and you've killed Hawkeye with the double Cyclopses. Um, and the big thing is if the Blackbird can survive turn one, you can pilot and get the 10 range or 11 range to be able to start throwing the tank and to kill Hawkeye. So that, that's my little tidbit with the how to use the Iceman. Um, and really I think that the trick would be the tank following gets you the piece to do the other barrier to have enough barrier here so any questions on that nope alright uh, no. do, do, your, do your thing Alex okay mine's pretty quick um so if you're not really feeling running X-Men, Unimind, Avengers, you know, uh, some there's a lot of new pieces in Earth X, there's a lot of pieces in uh, the new Captain Marvel set that you want to throw out there. Don't forget about this little guy here, the Tony Stark's car, the Stark car. Because if you're adjacent to it, you get ESD, and then you also get a plus one against range. Uh, so if you're next to it, you instantly get a plus three. So if you're running a team um, normally, and it's only 10 points, so keep in mind, if you're just running a, a same cap team, now if I'm running a same cap team, I'm probably going to start running a soldier because we have the new, um, what's his face, Colson. We have the new Colson, who is a taxi. Um, and if you're running a soldier, then you can run this bad guy. Sheriff. Sheriff Steve Rogers, who then forces Hawkeye to shoot with an 11 attack because you can't perplex attack for him or adjacent, anyone adjacent. Yeah. So you can basically have a Sam Cap soldier-esque team 
rushing out. Now he's 50 points, so there's some trade off there. But you could technically run up with him, um, try to position as well as you can around this, and basically have plus three to range. Or, or sorry, plus three to uh, defense. And he's 11 on a 19 or 11 on a 20. And he's only going to have probably one or two props, maybe. I mean, I'm thinking like actually out here in range. So that could protect your people better. And this is just an alternative for if you're like, man, I really, you know, I have a great idea for a team, but it's just, it's just missing something. I feel like the start car is going underlooked because it is expensive for a special terrain. It is 10 points. But it gives you ESD and the plus one if you're adjacent, if they're attacking with range. Um, so it, And it's one where if they ignore hindering, big whoop, you still got ESD and you still got the plus one from range. So it's not like uh, with the invisible plane, if they shoot through the hindering, they ignore the hindering part of it, and you still just get the plus one for a special train. You actually get all plus three from range. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's not going to shut Hawkeye down but it definitely helps mitigate some things. Um, it also helps sort of against Unimind um, because Unimind is going to have to pump up his attack to have a shot at shot shooting you. No, he, can, um, well, he, he, can't, pluck, he can't pump up his attack against Sheriff Steve. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, that, I'm talking purely about the Star Car. He'd have to do all into damage and then hope he... I mean, he could definitely destroy stuff, but yeah. it's a riskier shot. Um, yeah. And yeah, I so think... Sure, the... Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So, no, no. Oh. I was, I was going to say, I think the only thing now, and I've talked a lot about my police team in a similar mm-hmm. vein to this, um, with Sheriff Steve being um, police along with Sheriff Strange, mm-hmm. um, is that the only thing that bothers me about these two is Shredders and Whales, right? Um, because they Shredders don't care about rolling dice and whales are just close combat attacking you anyways um exactly but but also that but also that police team that i posted um i'm sure these guys have all seen that same idea you can put the sheriff strange in a start car or sheriff steve and the start car on there um and that and that's really good for that team as well the the thing is it's got to be good against the rest of the field as well yeah and, and I think uh, Share Steve is kind of like an add-on. If you're already running soldier, if you're already running a police team, or if you find yourself needing a leadership and you need also, you know, he, he comes with not just the attack thing. He comes with leadership, comes with the police team ability. Yeah. Um, he's pretty good for 50 points, but you have to, it can't be on teams that are kind of tight on points, if you know what I mean. Right, and 50 they, points is relevant for all call-outs too, so. Yeah. Um. Additionally, he's a great idea if you're running Sinister Syndicate and need a running chameleon, need a disguise. I think for me, him, Sheriff Strange, and maybe Darwin, something like that, I don't know, is probably my disguises just because I like being able to negate your attack bonuses. And while it doesn't affect whales right now, post-rotation, whales are probably going to rely more on something like Captain Venom stuff like that, and Captain Venom gives a plus one. So if you're chilling with 18 defense and they got to roll an eight, it's going to be a little bit harder for them. Now, it's not doesn't mean they can't roll it. This is purely, you know, it's kind of ways to mitigate the damage that they're going to be doing. And I think Stark Car is highly underrated currently. It, it, it's interesting. Like, we went, when X-Men dropped and we had Avengers Infinity the whole meta switched from range to close combat because we got the Wolverines and it felt like, okay, can you handle close combat? And now we're slowly edging our way back to, okay, well, can you handle range? Does that, does that make sense? Am I crazy? Like, I feel like it was more of Wolverines. All right. Close combat is, is the thing now. And now it's kind of like, all right, well, you got Hawkeye and Unimai, which are all about range now. Yeah. No, Um, you're, you're spot on. I think, um, Alex. And, uh, it, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you're spot on. It, it's just one of those things that it, it's week to week. It's area mm-hmm. to area, right? Um, you know, if you're in an area where um, uh, Blackbird is still a thing, then 
you know this this may not be a good play but if you're yeah. not going to be facing uh, a blackbird then the sheriff steve would be a good thing and and another thing another thing to keep in mind real quick is uh don't forget one thing people forget about hawkeye is that he is if you're playing a more of a one-man army you may have already mentioned this um if you're playing more of a one-man army if your one-man army has mastermind that's awesome because you know hawkeye if he targets you with master uh, targets you and you mastermind it to someone else you can't target them again mm -hmm. and so it's like okay my tent pole is safe it's why dan keeps wishing that mastermind was on an eternal yeah <laughs> um so it's it, it's just one thing to keep in mind that if you're playing someone like uh I've, let's see who has mastermind nowadays uh there's a shredder that has it there's sexy lexi the god of apocalypse yeah uh, witch queen i think has it Wh Wh witch queen and um they're the joker yeah the chair joker yeah and so there, there's not a ton of pieces but it's something to keep in mind if you're like all right i'm going to play more of a tentpole based thing that's not a bad choice to try to do some mastermind same with if i mean it, it's a probably a good scenario for x-men if they tried to run that deadpool if you were running Lila and all the and all those Wolverines, and you ran that one Deadpool for seventy five points, that says that all the adjacent Wolverines can use Mastermind, but only to choose Deadpool. Yeah, it killed Deadpool, but you've got three Wolverines, two Wolverines still living. No, so it. Uh, yeah, I mean they. Yeah, you could just Mastermind it to the Deadpool multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, and he pre he'd die, but your Wolverines aren't sitting there immobile or instantly dead from Unimind. So don't forget Mastermind exists. It's not everywhere, but because if he tries to target someone with Mastermind and they Mastermind someone else, that counts as being targeted, then he can't target them again. There's a ruling on it. It's had yeah. always to be, but it's clarified. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's definitely another way to say, all right, I'm rolling, running three Wolverines, uh, Lila, and Deadpool. That's 250. And now I got some, refer uh, maybe a Moira and something else. Yeah. Well, your Wolverines could survive because you can mastermind it all to Deadpool, and there you go. Then you so charge, there's ways you charge oh, Flurry. You then you charge Flurry it up the next turn. Yep, because I, he should have. Yeah, he does have X Men keyword, so it'd be dumb if he didn't. Right. The whole thing. Uh, this whole thing to, wouldn't work if he didn't. <laughs> yeah, and he has a stop click. So I mean, one, two, three. You know, he'd still die. Um, <laughs> but. It's one of those, it, there are ways to slow him down. Dan kind of showed you more ways to just prevent all damage. But if you're not willing to go that extent and not go like X-Men or Uni and try to mitigate, if you're really wanting to play your own way, which is absolutely cool, then try out the start car. See if you can fit Sheriff. If you're going non-theme, try to see if you can fit a uh, Sheriff Steve on there. Um but there are ways to mitigate Hawkeye's craziness. Yeah. And with that, I gotta go. So if anyone's got any quick questions for me, yeah, no, I think uh, we'll take uh, closing remarks. Joe, Kurt, you're the only two that are left right now, and uh, you guys got anything for us? Uh, I don't, Dan, but I, this is really informative. Thank you for having the class. No, thank you. Absolutely. Yep. So yeah, uh, and some good little tips. Yeah, and don't forget to talk in the Patreon chat or even any other chat uh, patreon you'll get probably more feedback directly from us because we'll we're trying to keep up with it but don't forget there's other avenues if you